can you identify the bones this is calcaneum this is talus this is navicular this is medial cuneiform cutney, bone and this is intermediate cuneiform bone and this is lateral cuneiform bone this is cuboid these are five metatarsals and these bones are tarsal bones and these are phalanges what is the importance of these arches in the foot they help to distribute body weight proportionally to the weight bearing points of the foot they avoid the pressure on the underlying vessels and nerves during jumping they act as shock absorbers they help in walking on uneven surfaces can you name those arches medial longitudinal arch lateral longitudinal arch transverse arch are they present at birth yes then why the foot of baby seem to be flat because of the subcutaneous fat what are the conditions that we can see flat foot sciatic nerve damage spinal cord damage diabetic neuropathy and sometimes it can be congenital what are the bones contribute to form lateral longitudinal arch this is the lateral longitudinal arch it consists of calcaneum cuboid and fifth and fourth metatarsals what are the structures that maintain these foot arches shape of the interlocking bones ligaments of foot plantar aponeurosis muscle actions okay can you give me some examples for those ligaments short and long plantar ligaments spring ligament dorsal plantar and interosseous ligaments between small bones of the forefoot what is forefoot the anterior aspect of the foot which is composed of five metatarsal bones 14 phalanges and associated soft tissue structures what is more important in walking ligaments or muscle contractions muscle contractions then what about standing ligaments are more important because when standing arches sink a little under the weight of the body so the bones lock together and ligaments linking them are at the maximum tension resulting immobilization of foot what are the main muscles that cause propulsion in walking gastrocnemius and soleus what are the muscles that reinforce medial longitudinal arch tibialis anterior tibialis posterior flexor hallucius longus what are the bones contribute to form medial longitudinal arch this is the medial longitudinal arch it consists of calcaneum talus and navicular bone three cuneiform bones first second and third metatarsal bones what are the parts of talus head neck and body what is the most commonly fractured area neck of the talus then what happens to the bone the body of the talus undergo avascular necrosis from where does it get its blood supply primarily from the blood vessels passing under the tail and neck as a vascular ring what are the bones that articulate with talus fibula tibia calcaneum and navicular bones what do you know about ankle joint it's a synovial hinge joint formed by medial and lateral malleoli lower end of the tibia and body of the talus the joint capsule is closely fits around the articular surfaces although the capsule is lax anteriorly and posteriorly it is reinforced by medial and lateral collateral ligaments medial collateral ligaments is a stronger one and it's it's also called as deltoid ligament 
plantar flexion and dorsiflexion are the movements occur in ankle joint. What movements gives the most stable position of ankle? Dorsiflexion. Why do you say so? Because the body of talus is slightly wider anteriorly and more narrower posteriorly, so in dorsiflexion it forms a wedge between two malleoli.